We did nothing wrong! Yeah, we did. You were supposed to fight for people who couldn't fight for themselves. So, King James Version critics and TR, Textus Receptus critics, claim that Erasmus, the gentleman and scholar who compiled and edited the Textus Receptus, which is the underlying Greek text of the King James Version, they claim, the critics, that Erasmus only had access to very late Greek manuscripts. This is claimed by Dr. Philip Comfort, an essential guide to Bible versions, and also by Dr. James White, the King James Only Controversy, and some others. Is that statement true? I wouldn't be so sure about that, and here's why. Number one, Desiderius Erasmus of Rotterdam was an Augustinian Roman Catholic priest. And although his friend, Johannes Ruchlin, did help him access five late Greek manuscripts, this did not make those manuscripts inaccurate. Okay, next, Erasmus being a Roman Catholic priest, had access to many Greek manuscripts in any library in Europe. Now, let's think about that for a minute. The Dominican Library in Basel was something that Erasmus could explore at any time at his own leisure, being a Catholic priest. The Vatican Library in Rome. Imagine the treasure trove. Imagine the ancient relics, manuscripts, and artifacts that Erasmus had access to in the Vatican Library. God chose the right guy for the work. And so, to the critics, we would say that more than likely that is not true. As a matter of fact, let's listen to what Erasmus himself says in his letter to Johann von Botzheim in 1523, in regard to Jerome's letters, which Erasmus uh, made amends to and, and made some revisions to, that included some scripture. Okay, here's what Erasmus himself said. In this, meaning in this work, I did not lack ancient codices. In Erasmus's own words, he had access to ancient codices. Of course, that's plural for the word codex. Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vaticanus, etc. So we're not sure exactly what codex he's talking about, or plural, codices that he's referring to. But make no mistake about it, Erasmus could access and had within his reach and could explore and research any of the ancient texts available and extant in the 1500s. And imagine what was extant back then. It's not extant now. And imagine this. Erasmus was a native of Europe. He lived there. He didn't require a passport and a book of flight and to fly away from, you know, attachments here in the Western world. So, another question then that we would pose is, okay, if you can do something better than the King James Version, critics of the KJV or the Texas Receptus, then let's see the work. Help us out. As you wade through this ocean of manuscripts and you explore and research show us which one then gather together a consortium my brothers and I say this respectfully to those of you who are critics 
gather together a consortium or a group of scholars and translate something better than this. You want to update the language? Go ahead. But if what you produce omits whole passages and alterates whole passages, then I'm not interested. And most of us who believe in our English Bible, our English translation of the Bible, are going to say that we're, we're going to reject any product that contains omissions or alterations. And so, come on home, fellas. It's been in your lap the whole time. Just trust and believe your KJV. Instead of drowning in a sea of manuscripts searching for, you know, it's almost like one of those old uh, Walt Disney movies where you have somebody searching the Atlantic for Davy's locker and the key. And the key opens up a treasure chest at the bottom of the ocean. And in that treasure chest are the lost original writings or scrolls or treasures or whatever, what have you. It's been in your lap the whole time, fellas. Here it is. Can you produce something better? I trow not. And have a blessed day.